Okay, number 12 is going to have three parts. The same three parts that you see in the sample test are the same ones that will be on the actual test. You're going to be given a polynomial and you're also going to be given one of the zeros. This piece of information here we're going to use um, part two. So part one, let's start with that. Uh, it says use the rational zero theorem to find the list of possible zeros. Uh, and they want you to list the possible zeros and make a list. So uh, to do that, we need to use a formula and the formula is factors of a sub n, or a sub 0 rather, a sub 0, over factors of a sub n. Okay, so this is the main formula that we're going to use. Now the a sub 0 is always the last number. The a sub n is always the number in front of the x with the highest power. So that's going to be uh, this one. So we're going to do factors of 13 divided by factors of... Three. So again, it's going to be factors of 13 over factors of 3. So that's the main formula that we're going to use. Now, factor is a number that divides evenly into that one. So we're going to find all the numbers that divide evenly into 13, all the numbers that divide evenly into 3. Now, both these are prime numbers, which means that we're only going to have the number 1 in itself are going to be considered factors. So when we want to write that out, it's going to look like this, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 13. And the bottom we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. So factors of 13 would just be 1 and 13. Factors of 3 would be 1 and 3. Okay, but we, we don't want to leave the answer like this because it's not a list. We want to expand this out and write a list. So what you're going to do is you'll take all the numbers on top, divide by the first number, all numbers on top, divide by the second number, all of them on top, divide by the third number, however many there are. You're going to do that to create your list. Now for this one, we're just going to do uh, 1 and 13 divided by 1. Uh, so if we do that, you're just going to get the same two numbers we started with. Anything divided by 1 uh, is itself. But now we're going to take all the numbers on top and divide by 3. So we're going to get plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 13 thirds. And these don't have to be written in any special order. It's okay to leave your answer just like that. So you can put the plus or minus in front of each one. That takes care of all the plus and minus sign configurations that you could have with this one. So this would be this right here would be your answer for the first part. So now let's take a look at the, the second part. Now the second part is asking you to use the zero to find the other zeros. And we want to do this by using synthetic division. Whatever number that you see in the parentheses, we're going to put that right here uh, in a box. And then we're going to write these. Now, you want to make sure that these are all descending powers and there's no terms that are missing. So when we put that in, we have 3, negative 23, 31, and 13. If, let's say, for instance, the x was not there and you just had this, you'd have to put a 0 placekeeper in there in place of the term that's missing. So if you don't put that in there, you're not going to get the correct answer. So we want to make sure all the terms are written in highest to lowest power and all the, the coefficients are accounted for, which they are in this case. Okay, so now that we have this set up properly, we're going to do this synthetic division. Synthetic uh, works. The first number is going to drop straight down. So you always just take that first number and drop it down. You're going to multiply this number by the number in the box. That result goes underneath in the next column. 3 times negative 1 third is negative 1. That goes in the next column. When you do synthetic, you're always adding everything. So we're going to add that together. We get negative 24. Negative 24 times negative 1 third is positive 8. We're going to add that together. 39. 39 times negative 1 third, you're going to get negative 13. And then we get a 0 as expected. Now, if you don't get a zero here, that means you got to go back and check your work because you might have made a mistake somewhere, uh, or it's possible you may have forgotten to put in a zero placekeeper. Now, once we get done with this, what we're going to be left with is 3x squared minus 24x plus 39 equals zero. Whenever you do synthetic, it always drops the power down by one. Originally, it was a cube. Now, it's going to be a square when we put our coefficients back in. Now we're not done yet because we have to actually solve this and set it equal to zero. So we can do that by doing factoring. So first of all, notice that there's a three that's common. So we can do that to 
make the numbers a little bit smaller. So now I get, I get this. So take a three out of all those terms. Now the part that's left inside, that is something I'm not gonna be able to factor anymore. This is as far as I can go with that because I can't find two numbers that multiply to make 13 but add to be negative eight. But we still have to solve this equation. Okay, so we're still gonna do that. We're gonna leave this part. I'm gonna move this up to here, uh, get some space for us. Uh, but this is what we have so far. Uh, we're gonna set it equal to zero. Now I can just go ahead and divide both sides by three and then I have this that's left over. So this part is one where I have to do the quadratic formula. So whenever you get something that can't factor, then you wanna use quadratic. So quadratic, uh, would, so you want, this formula is one that you wanna make sure that you know. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. That's the quadratic formula. The a uh, will be the number in front of the x squared. The a is one in this case. The b is gonna be negative eight and the c is gonna be 13. So let's put those in. Uh, we're gonna get negative, don't forget the, which is a double negative there, uh, with the negative eight you put in, plus or minus the square root of, okay, so we have b squared, negative eight squared minus four times ac. a is one and c is 13, just barely fitting that in the board here, all divided by two times a, uh, a is one. So this is what the setup will look like when you put that in the quadratic formula. We want to simplify this as far down as possible. Now two negatives, we're going to get uh, positive eight plus or minus the square root. Okay, now this is going to be 64 minus 52. And that's all over two times one is two. You want to subtract this. You get eight plus or minus the square root. You'll get 12 inside there when you subtract that one. Now this, you want the square root of 12, you want to break that down one more time. Uh, 12 it can be written as four times three. Square root of four is two. We can take the two outside the, the radical. So we get two square root of three. That's gonna be over two. But we can do one more step uh, on this one. We can divide each of these by two. And then our final answer will be four plus or minus the square root of three. And that's as far down as we can go. So this will be considered uh, zeros. So when it says, um, what you'll put on the answer blank, it says use the given zero to find the other zeros. You can actually just answer that four plus or minus square root of three, and you can put that down there, uh, and that would be the other zeros, okay? So now the last thing that we're gonna do is we want to uh, use the, the zeros to factor. Now we're actually not gonna really use the zeros. You don't wanna try and, you don't need to factor something when you have a square root in it. Again, it came from this term right here. We said earlier that that part cannot be canceled. So now we're stepping into step uh, part three. So part three would be the one where they want you to factor. Now, this part that we had earlier, this is actually gonna be part of my answer. So almost always you're gonna use the answer you got for part two and you can use it in part three. Okay, so we have three times x squared minus eight x plus 13. So we have that part so far, and we know that's, that's, that part's factored and it's correct. Now you also wanna uh, include the, the zero here, the negative uh, one third. Whenever you write that in there and turn a zero into a factor, it's always x minus whatever the zero is. Now in this case, you have x minus a negative one third, and that's gonna turn that into a plus one third. So we have this. Now typically you don't want to leave your answer written out this way with, a, with fractions. Uh, and so instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rearrange this. Now this doesn't always, this doesn't always happen, but some, a lot of times whenever you have a, a fraction, you're always gonna end up with some number outside that you'll be able to use uh, to simplify that one. So when you get down to this point right here, I just rearrange this as multiplication so I can change the order around. And then now that I have that complete, the three I can actually take and multiply that inside each of these. And I get three X plus one uh, when I multiply that. Three times one third, that goes away. So I get three X plus one uh, left over. But I still have this part uh, left. And then this part I can't factor anymore. 
So then I would get this. This would be uh, fully factored. I can always see if my answer is correct by multiplying it back through. And if we were to foil this out all the way, we would get this one, the original one that we started with. So this answer here, this would be fully factored.